are you, pastor, undermining the Bible's authority in your preaching? Uh, number one from Scott Slayton, by preaching a sermon in search of a text. Oh, man. I've never seen this done before. <laughs> have you? Have you? Uh, here's what Mr. Slayton wrote. A sermon in search of a text begins with an idea. Today, I want to talk about your finances, your love life, your children. Then the pastor searches out a text that makes reference to the thing he wants to talk about and uses it as the launching pad for the rest of uh, the sermon. <laughs> to be clear, ain't nothing wrong with an occasional topical sermon because of the need of the body. But this is the man's style. He wants to address something. Huh. How can I possibly support this with the Bible? And then he finds a text, typically reads it up front, and then says, Sayonara, number four sign the pastor is undermining the Bible in his preaching by abandoning the text during the sermon. I think I just said that. Closely related to the sermon in search of a text is the sermon that starts with a passage but then abandons the text after reading it. And it can happen by either running with one thought from the text or by talking about the text in generic ways without pointing people back to the actual words of the text. What makes this uh, rather insidious as a pattern is that the pastor doesn't show the depth, the riches of the text. Can this be done where the pastor gets the main thought of the passage and really dives deeper into that, of course it is okay. But again, if that is the pattern where we never see the richness of the language, the richness of the scarlet thread that runs throughout Scripture, then the pastor simply is not going as deep as the word goes, and that's undermining the Bible. Uh, number three, by letting an illustration drive the sermon. Wow. And it usually involves a prop. Preachers can so fall in love with an illustration or prop that it becomes the main point of the message instead of the Bible. We've all heard these. They begin with a short talk about the biblical text, then a lengthy illustration takes center stage, and eventually the preacher arrives at his application, not of the text, but of the illustration or of the prop. Just saw a pastor do this with a bow and arrow. Huh? That's right, the pastor paraded around the stage with a bow and arrow. What was his point? I don't remember, but I do remember that he used a bow and arrow. So perhaps somebody will walk away with a greater appreciation of archery, but they will not appreciate God and his word more. A sign number two, by only giving a running commentary on the text. This is another one that's very, very sneaky. A sermon that only gives a running chat on the meaning of the text is lacking. There must be an oughtness about the message. The Bible doesn't just tell us a story or teach us knowledge about God. It calls us to trust in Jesus, to worship the Father, to live by the power of the Holy Spirit, to love our neighbor, and to look forward to the return of our great King. We don't teach these truths, we proclaim them. And that is the difference between preaching and teaching. Today we are going to learn about the great white throne judgment. This is the place. Now that's teaching, and that is fine, and that is good. And it doesn't need to have a whole lot of unction, but preaching should cause the unconverted sinner to tremble at the thought of being judged by God when he opens the books and turns to the page with your name in it. Have you escaped the wrath that is to come? What will you do at the great white throne judgment if you do not have a Savior? That's the difference between teaching and preaching. Uh, number one way the pastor can undermine the Bible by failing to appreciate the mood of the text. Oops, 
We should preach to produce affections that correspond to the mood of the biblical text. If we're preaching on heaven, we want people to be overcome with joy. If the sermon is on hell, then we would be foolish to pack the sermon with funny stories. We want people to feel the weight of God's judgment. The ethos of the sermon should convey the ethos of the text. We cannot and should not try to produce these affections. Instead, we pray that God would give us affections that have been shaped by the message of the text we are preaching. Pastor, have you fallen into any of those ditches? Then climb back out and stand on the authority of God's word. Thank you very much for watching Something Wretched. If you would like to continue watching Wretched videos, would you be kind enough to become a Wretched Club member? Your monthly support keeps us on the air and you get lots of tchotchkes and benefits. Learn more at wretched.tv slash club.